on the toss, and wouldn't you know they chose to refer to Creech to put the kid out there first in front of 94,000 under the light. Yeah, it was a nice walk in for J.R. Reed. It might not be such a nice welcome for Taylor Powell. Like a gladiator in the Georgia night. Again, you wonder the effects of any letdown for Georgia off the rivalry win over Florida 24-17 a week ago in the cocktail party in Jacksonville. Rodrigo Blankenship kicking away to Tyler Beatty. And we are underway from Athens. Here's Beatty with a nice return. And that's where we introduce America to Taylor Powell, the redshirt sophomore from Fayetteville, Arizona. He replaced Kelly Bryant a couple of weeks ago against Kentucky. Played the majority of that second half. So he got his feet wet. What's he feeling right now, Chris? Yeah, well, he probably can't feel his feet right now. <laughs> uh, you know, he's played a lot of football at the high school level. This isn't high school anymore. This is uh, big-time college football. And you heard Todd. I think Barry Odom had the right approach. Don't try to do too much too soon in this football game. They expect to see some conservative play calling and on first down hand it off to Tyler Beatty and he'll rush ahead for one yard take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players Todd well Taylor Powell is going to have to rely on his tight end Albert Okui Boonum who is probably their best player in terms of the offensive skill guys on the uh, on the Missouri side defensively Richard LeCount is a big time hitter he's got big speed he's going to be all over the field Here's the throw, out to Beatty, trying to take it off the turf, but it'll go as an incomplete pass. Okui Boonham, a week ago or two weeks ago, off the, before the bye, was targeted twice, didn't catch a single ball. That can't happen for Missouri. Yeah, and well, they played against the Kentucky in a quagmire as well, so you give them a little bit of a break, but uh, certainly Okui Boonham has to be a target, especially in third down situations like this. Did not want to see third and nine for the youngster, but here he is. First series of the game. Taylor Powell dumps it underneath the Beatty. And he'll come close to the marker. Be taken down short. Give him eight on the play. Needed nine. Tyreek Stevenson, the true freshman, making the stop. It's fourth down. And that was the right play, the right uh, throw there from Powell. Beatty just, you're hoping he makes one guy miss and gets a first down. But a three and out for Georgia's defense. Tucker McCann does all the kicking. I mean, kicking off, punting, and place kicking. Got to be the most active right leg in America. From his own 20, Dominic Blaylock is back deep for Georgia. From the 22. Still on his feet. And he is brought down on the 40-yard line. It's a 45-yard punt. It's an 18-yard return. Last week, Jake Fromm went to a cocktail party and starred through two touchdowns to beat Florida. Clutch all game, especially on third down. The emotional moment for Fromm and his head coach, Kirby Smart. He said, don't ever doubt, doubt Jake Fromm. And, um, I'm just so thankful I got a head coach who believes in me. And believes in this team. I'm so thankful to be here. One of the many things we love about college football right there. Yeah, there's no question. And they had uh, lunch over the break. And uh, they talked a little bit about kind of where Jake Fromm is in his career and the offense. Uh, they, they didn't have a great outing against South Carolina. It followed it up with not a great outing against Kentucky. In the last three games, they're averaging only 20 points a game. But I think Jake Fromm has, has found his niche with this offense in particular. It's different than a year ago. There's no Ridley, no Miko Hardman, no Holloman, okay, no Holyfield. He's got a lot of new pieces, a lot of young players that have had to grow up in this offense. And I think he and James Coley now on the same page, and they're getting better on that side of the ball. 30 and 6 all time as starting quarterback for these Bulldogs. Second down and eight from their own 42. Bit of a high snap. It's DeAndre Swift, the second carry of the night. Game of two. Take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. Aaron, you just mentioned Swift. I think he's one of the most underrated running backs in the entire country. He's going to be one of the top three running backs drafted coming up. And I think, feel like we overlook him. The other player to keep an eye on, number 15 wide receiver, Lawrence Cager. 
He is unbelievable in 50-50 balls going up and boxing out defenders. The graduate transfer from Miami. He is the top target for Jake Fromm. Maybe we see him here on third down and six. From sideline, got a man, it's Cager. As scripted. Thirty-two on the play, Todd. And we just mentioned Cager, and this is what he does. He is a vertical threat. He's a player, when you put the ball up, your quarterback from is going to trust him to go make a play. There, he didn't have to use his body to box anyone out, but that's what he does best. He has, as you said, become the go-to guy for Georgia. He really didn't have to do what anything. A throw. That ball was put there right on the money. All he had to do was stick his hands out. First down and 10. Cook. Bobcat. Cook out of the Wildcat. And he is picked up and thrown down in a big way. Tyree Gillespie will also won on the play. Yeah, really good recognition by this Missouri defense. We talk a lot about Georgia's defense tonight, but Missouri comes into this game playing very well on the defensive side, led by number one right there in the middle of the screen, Jordan Elliott. He's their redshirt junior, 6'4", 315 pounds. He is a tough assignment for any offensive lineman. He's got to wear uniform number one. Yes. Number one. You know you're an athlete when you wear number one. 300 pounder. All right. From the 25 of Mizzou. Here's from trying to set up the screen too strong for DeAndre Swift. Couldn't haul it down. You see this Georgia offense and James Coley their offensive coordinator you get into the red zone fringe here they try something different a wildcat there you see James wildcat with Cook on first down second down you come back trying to get the screen out to DeAndre Swift but he just wasn't able to get past the trash in there with the defensive line if he was able to he had a play third down and 11 now single setback is Swift but a young star in the making, George Pickens. He's George's number one bottom of your screen. Here's Fromm to throw. Coming across the middle, it is Pickens. He flashes some of that star power right away. Touchdown, Georgia. Well, you knew something was coming, huh? You're diagnosing plays now, calling out touchdowns. When you watch as much film as I watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you watch the film of George Pickens, he flashes. He's got the speed. He was probably their biggest recruit in the offseason because they flipped him from Auburn at the last minute on signing day. He decides to come to Georgia, and he's contributing as a true freshman. Hey, did he catch it with one hand or two? No, two hands. Because that's significant when it comes to him. <laughs> He loves hauling in those passes with one hand. Definitely in practice anyway. Here's Blankenship. On for the extra point. Got it through. Tremendous talent. Gets downfield. And when he gets the ball in his hands, nice job securing it. Reaching up for the touchdown. Puts Georgia up 7-0. And you're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive game of the week. That last drive by Georgia, six plays, 60 yards. Pickens a 25-yard touchdown catch from Jake Fromm. Seven nothing. Dogs. Blankenship will boot in the air. Beatty will let it bounce out of the back of the end zone. Second crack for Missouri with the ball. For young Tyler Taylor Powell. Yeah, you would expect Missouri to try to get the run game going. That's the, the best part of their offense right now with Roundtree and Beatty and take some pressure off of Taylor Powell. You know, in last year's game against Georgia, they ran the ball well. They had over 182 yards rushing and four touchdowns on the ground. Now, we know that Georgia hasn't given up a rushing touchdown all season, but I think for Missouri to stay in this ball game, they're going to have to get some production on the ground. Missouri comes in without their best receiver, Jonathan Johnson. They hope to have him back for Florida next week. Taylor Powell 
from the 20 with Kelly Bryant watching him. Georgia rushing four. Shallow cross across the middle. And let's get an update from Matt Barry. Steve Levy, good evening. After an Alabama touchdown, LSU put on a play calling clinic. Clyde Edwards Alaire, fourth touchdown of the day. And LSU takes the lead late in the fourth quarter, 46 34. What a game going there. You never expect to see Alabama treated that way at home. Here between the hedges, Georgia up top 7 0. Larry Roundtree's first carry of the night. Pick up a one. Mark Webb the stop for the third down. Now, like you said, we're trying to get that run game going. I like the pass on first down. They get Okue Bonham and stay ahead of the down and distance. And now brings up a third manageable situation where they can choose to throw it or more likely hand it to Roundtree. Gonna throw. Nearly intercepted. J.R. Reed tried to step in front of Okoye Boonham. And it's fourth down. Tucker McCann on to punt. Dominic Blaylock back to receive. Couple of three and outs from Missouri. Tough way to start on the road here in Athens. McCann's been a pleasant surprise as a punter. That one goes for 40 yards. Jake Fromm will take that to the field. You know, these are valuable snaps, valuable plays at home. The people who love him here so much. I don't know how many more cracks they're going to get to see this kid well, not here in the stadium. Yeah, he's got a decision to make at the end of the year. He's not thinking about that. He's he's a guy that's living in the moment. Uh, but certainly, this is his 36th start. You know, four-year starters had an unbelievable career here in Georgia, and uh, these fans have been spoiled. They've had some great quarterback play the last decade between him and Aaron Murray. Both of them have uh, given their heart and soul. They wear it on their sleeve, and uh, he, you know you're going to get everything from Jake Fromm every single time he touches the grass. And you know he's going to be ready to go. He's going to be prepared. Flip the Swift. Crashes out beyond the 30. Khalil Oliver, the tackle gain of five, Todd. And we've been doing this for years, and we meet with most quarterbacks every single week. Brian, I don't know about you. I, I think he was the most impressive young man I've sat down and, and talked to in terms of just understanding and loving the game, but also just being comfortable in his own skin. And you can see why they've got a bunch of five star guys that have come in here and they've shipped off a couple of them. Fromm is just he's the guy and it, it's really impressive to sit down and talk to him. There's no question Todd you know Justin Fields Jacob Eason they were the heralded guys and they were supposed to take his job and he just refuses to, to not be on the field and really is a, a joy to to talk with him. You know I always go back one of my favorite things that Steve Young talks about quarterback play it, it's a craft right it's not a job You're not just out there throwing the ball making plays it's a craft and that's how Jacob Fromm. That's how he approaches the, the quarterback position. It's really fun to talk with him, to understand how much football he knows. He challenges the coaches in the meetings. James Coley says, I have to come to the meetings ultra prepared. Otherwise, I'll get exposed by a question from Jake Fromm. Right. And you get the sense Fromm sort of dumbs it down a little bit. Doesn't make the other guys in the room feel bad. Here's Harrion. He's got the first down. Tyler Gillespie. <laughs> Matt, let us know what it goes final. Well, I mean, what competition from Alabama? They, you, you could have counted them out twice in that football game. They just keep coming back. LSU's outplayed them. Yeah, but it's it's been some mistakes, LSU defensively, but it looks like they're going to escape 46-41. You see that coming into that one? No. thought there'd be a little <laughs> more defense there. Zamir White here. The crowd will chant Zeus. It's a pickup of, of five on that play. This is a great start for Georgia offensively. You know, I think they had some some time to to kind of regroup after the Florida game, and that was a tough defense. Kirby Smart understood. Listen, just get out of there with a win, 
no matter that we only scored 24 points, we just want to win. But this offense needs to continue to grow. They, they need to continue to get better. Like I said, the last three times out, they've only averaged 20 points. So tonight's a great opportunity for them to put their foot on the gas pedal. Second and five. Here's Fromm, great protection. Put some air underneath it. And Cager couldn't haul that one in. Had it in his hands and could not hang on. Third down. This gives you a sense of the touch of Jake Fromm. He knows exactly what he wants to do on this play. Watch it from behind him. I'm going to freeze it right when he decides to make this throw. He's right there, okay? This ball has to be out here, and it has to be not a bullet, but he has to put air under it for Cager to run under it. You can't throw that any better. That's, that's great anticipation and touch from Jake Fromm. Cager's going to make that catch, too, 99 out of 100 times. Third downs have been the key for Georgia last week, 12 of 18 against Florida, 3 for 3 so far here tonight. Third down and 5, Pickens is top of your screen. See if Fromm looks that way again. Coming across the middle, no. Tyler Simmons could not come up with it. Demarcus AC, the captain for that Missouri defense, had the coverage. And they're looking for somebody outside of Cager to step up. We've seen it from George Pickens already with a touchdown, but they need Simmons to step up. He's their veteran receiver coming back. He and Demetrius Robertson, and uh, he dropped the ball last uh, in, in overtime against South Carolina, which was intercepted, and now another drop. Missed opportunity. Jake Camarda is back to punt. Been rather inconsistent. Kind of week to week. You're not sure what you're going to get again out of Kamara. Rashad Floyd signals for the fair catch and nearly muffed that. That's a 37 yard punt. We'll step out. Seven other in Georgia. Missouri's got the. There was stress. Alabama was coming back, and they had to make plays on offense, and it was Joe Burrow running with his feet. I think they really sealed it. On first down and 10, here's Roundtree. Missouri trying to get something going on the offense. Casey just joining us after watching that classic from Alabama. Here's the only touchdown of this game. That's George Pickens, the true freshman, who, by the way, went to Hoover High School. Where? In Alabama. How'd they get him out of the state? They wanted to go to Auburn, and he flipped on signing day to Georgia. Jake Fromm looking good early on. Roundtree stopped by Tay Crowder for no gain. And the other news for Missouri, Kelly Bryant, a no-go. Injured himself. Hamstring. Had to leave the game at Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. Replacing that game by Taylor Powell, who gets the start here today. The redshirt sophomore, he's in a difficult, difficult spot. Already trailing 7-0 and ready for third down and four. Powell, good, strong throw, just missed the mark. Miss Tyler Beatty. And it's another three and out. Third possession for Missouri. And they're about to punt for the third time tonight. Georgia, the 7 0. Lead Steve Levy along with Brian Greasy. So Alabama's out of the mix, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would think so. I mean, I would never say never, we but talked about this during the week. they're certainly outside of the top four in my book. Yes. You know, the committee can always rely on the eye test. <laughs> and there's Alabama with one loss. Well, a good did, loss. They did talk about how, how close was the game, right? right? Like, I think LSU handled that football game pretty much start to finish. Yes, Alabama did come back, and they fought. Give them a lot of credit. But uh, LSU certainly, they flexed their muscles in that one. I, I have never seen Alabama play so poorly in the first seven, eight minutes of that football game at home. If anybody looked tight, looked like the Crimson Tide, they made a bunch of mistakes early. But you're right, came down to the fourth quarter game anyway. Referee tonight is Mark Curls. There is no foul on the play. Disregard the flag. Game. Mm -hmm. Check wow. back tomorrow. Definitely Monday. Here's Fromm on first down. He'll hand off to James Cook. Kobe Whiteside. Stop. So what I hear from you, Greece, every single week coming out of meetings and interviews, hey, they don't ask this quarterback to do a lot. Jake Fromm is the total opposite. Yeah, he really is, and, and you can't give him enough. I mean, he just, he, he'll study it. He's in the film room all the time, 
uh, and he wants to know exactly what everybody's job is on the field. He spends most of his time mentally in the defensive mind, right? He's looking at the defense. He knows exactly what his guys are doing, and he's the thing he does best is getting them in the perfect play on a consistent basis. Now he's got to deal with a potential injury to a center, Trey Hill. We'll be right back. Excellent offensive line for Georgia. Coming out, Kobe Smart said of Hill, he's the most athletic 350 pound man I've ever seen. And now Cade Mays, Georgia lucky to have him. He's played right guard, right tackle, tight end. We're told he could snap, and he's about to snap. Ben Cleveland will take Mays' spot at right guard as he slides over to the center position. Snap in the exchange is fine. DeAndre Swift. On second down and seven, picks yeah, this up might, four, It might be down. one of the, the biggest changes the Kirby Smart era before he got here. They really didn't have a whole lot of depth on the offensive line, but Kirby Smart has made it a priority in recruiting. And now, not only do they have five up front that are really good starters, but they have reserves like Ben Cleveland, who has started 13 games of his own, Cade Mays, and and folks like that that can that can pop in there for an injury, and they don't have any drop off. The biggest offensive line in Georgia's school history. That's saying something. Third down and three. Protection breaks down. Brom going to run for it. It's got the first down and more. Takes a shot up high. He'll get a push from behind. And he's in the Missouri territory. It's a 15 yard run. It's a great read here from Jake Fromm. Doesn't like it downfield. Nobody's open. He sees a lane. And he's he doesn't get enough credit for this. You know, he's not going to make a whole lot of people miss. He's not going to outrun anybody, but he is going to finish runs with a physical nature. And trust me, that offensive line, they watch that, right? And they they will assume the attitude of the quarterback. A lot of times the whole team will. And the fact that he doesn't just slide there, but he actually gets some contact. I think that energizes this squad. 21st rush of the season for Fromm. As we approach three minutes left in the first quarter. Here's Fromm rolling to his right. A lot of green in front of him. And he'll just throw that one away. Tyler Simmons in the neighborhood. Now this Missouri defense comes into this game. They are number one in the SEC against the pass. And this is a unit, and Ryan Walters, a defensive coordinator, that they know their system. It's a little bit different, yes. They're going to play a mix of 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, but it is a pressure defense. They are not afraid to come after you. And I think Jake Fromm and James Coley know that, and that's why they're moving the pocket a little bit to take the pressure off. And they're without Cale Garrett, who was their best linebacker, maybe the best defender on the team he's lost for the season. Sort of taking on the role as a coach, trying to help out where he can in the building every single day as if he were playing. Here's Harrion on second down and 10 for two or three and bring up a third down. The other thing that, that Missouri is going to need to do defensively is move their defensive line and their front a little bit. You can't just stay static and allow this big offensive line for Georgia to come off the football. Jordan Elliott, he, he can handle it, but they don't have four Jordan Elliott's up there. So uh, they're going to need to move, and they're going to need to try to confuse Jake Fromm in situations just like this, third and long. Let's see if we can get an update on Trey Hill. Third down and seven now. At the 44 and a half of Missouri. It's Cage or bottom of your screen. From put some air on the deep court, and it is Lawrence Cager with a catch. Gain of 15, first down, Bulldogs. You can just see the confidence that Jake Fromm has in Cager. And at any point in time, he's willing and able to just throw this ball up. Look where he throws that ball from. I mean, he's back here off his back foot. And just lays it out there the same route he threw earlier in the game to Cage that he dropped. Now at the 28 of Missouri. Cager took a long and winding and fascinating road to get to Athens. Good protection. Now Fromm runs out of time, and it's Cager on the other side. The graduate transfer from Miami had a relationship at Miami with the offense coordinator, James Coley. Kirby first recruited him to Alabama when he was there. 
And they went back and forth and back and forth. They actually played for Mark Richt at Miami, right. former Georgia head coach. And then Coley got a text from Cager. Cage, uh, Coley replied, I can't talk to you. This was after Miami, yeah, uh, coaching change. <laughs> and then Cager said, I'm in the portal. He said, now I can talk to you. And uh, Coley went to Kirby Smart and said, hey, I'm going to be late for this meeting. Yeah, they were actually in New Orleans at the uh, Sugar Bowl when that all went down and happened. And they were fortunate to get him. Here's Harrion. He swung around by Akeel Byers. Gain a four on the play. We're talking about Cager. He's a, a quarterback's dream because the 50-50 balls I mentioned earlier, Jake Fromm trusts him, and he's earned that trust because he's as good as anyone in the country at going up, boxing out defenders, and, and using his body to make plays and unbelievable leaping ability as well. So that he's a special talent, and, and this has been a perfect fit with, with Fromm, and Fromm trusts him and is going to give him opportunities. There's third down and six. Final minute of play in the quarter. There's Jake Fromm. Underneath the pickings. Down to the 20. He's going to be shy of the marker. DeMarcus AC made sure of that. It's a gain of four. And there is a flag down. They got a flag in the area of holding or hands to the face. But what a great play by DeMarcus AC. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 90 defense. Phillies half the distance to the goal for the run. First down. Markel Utsi, junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, got flag. Wow, you got, you know, this Missouri defense and then this secondary, AC makes a great play, tracking Perkins all the way across the field and comes up and makes the tackle and just an unnecessary hit there from Utsi. He took three steps. Look at the effort there from AC. They had forced a fourth down and would have been a, uh, been a field goal attempt and an undisciplined play from Utsi gives Jake Fromm another chance. Utsi really bailed out Georgia there. Looked like Fromm might have been limping. Definitely got up slowly. First down and 10 from just outside the 10, so they can get a first down. Fromm, quick throw. It's Cager to the five. Gain a six. Jarvis Ware forced him out. Well, you know that Missouri is going to play predominantly man-to-man. -man. And they'll, they'll switch it up with zone every now and then, but it's going to be predominantly man, and it's going to be Jarvis Ware, who Troy Walters feels is their best cover guy against Cager. And right now, Cager's eating him alive. That'll do it. Quarter number one complete. Georgia enjoying a 7 nothing lead. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the Shanahan family, Coach right, Me and right, Kyle, but, right. but I also I need the last undefeated team just to lose one game so that the 72 Dolphins are preserved. So. Got it. Yes, you are conflicted. Been saying that about you for a long time. <laughs> Here's DeAndre Swift. Down to the three-yard line. Devin Nicholson makes the stop. It's a gain of two. They made the long walk all the way down the field to open up the second quarter. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy. Todd McShay and Molly McGrath. Only Molly and Todd are actually between the hedges. We are high above them. I think the guy between the hedges that I would target here on third down is, is Cager. He's the one that got you down here. And if, if he gives man-to-man -man here on where, I'd, I'd take a shot on the fade ball. Fromm has completed just five passes to this point, but four of the five have been on third down. And here's a third and two. Out of the gun from the three. Low snap. Pressure. From off the fingertips. Charlie Warner. Romrell Perkins had the pressure. Came unhinged. I think Fromm missed that one. He had DeAndre Swift wide open on the on the out route. He's going to come here. Cager's going to clear it out, and he ended up throwing the ball to the tight end. But Swift was the one that was wide open. There's nobody there. I mean, that's that's where the ball's going to go. You don't see Fromm miss many times, but he missed that one. Fromm took another hit. So Missouri doing what they can, and this drive stalls out. Blankenship. This is in essence an extra point. On the way. And it is good. Rodrigo Blankenship has made his 186 consecutive extra points earlier in the game. And there nails that field goal. We'll get to that Georgia defense. Yeah, this defense that has just been all over. 
offenses throughout the course of this season. We saw them against Notre Dame, saw them against Tennessee. They've kept the, this team in games at times because the offense uh, has been growing. It's been the defense that they have built this 7-1 record on. And the only thing they haven't done is forced a whole lot of turnovers. They only had nine on the, on the season, but uh, that's, that's nitpicking because everything else has been elite. What's interesting to me, there's not really a big name star on the defense. It's team defense, and it's the way they've, they've played as a group. Obviously, very good coaching, but I, I just I appreciate it watching the tape, the way they play with discipline. And if it's a, the second or third string defensive lineman coming in, he's going to provide as much as the first string. And Todd, I think everybody talks about the rush defense and no TDs, but I think it, the, the key to this defense are the two safeties, J.R. Reed and Richard the Count. Both of them experienced. They're able to handle what Kirby Smart puts on their plate. Beatty will let it bounce out of the back of the end zone. And Kirby Smart asks a lot of them, as you see Hill going to go back into the locker room. But he asked a lot of the secondary in particular. Kirby Smart is a secondary coach by trade. He handles these guys himself. Watch the adjustments here. You got two safeties and in one motion changes the whole defense. The check goes to man to man. You get pressure off the edge. This is preparation, knowing that that with that short motion, they're going to run the ball to that side. So let's bring pressure with Reed. And this defense and this secondary in particular, they have more checks and more reads than any defense in college football other than Alabama because it's the same system that Alabama runs. But let's watch them on this drive and watch how much they have to communicate. First down and 10. Taylor Powell to throw and completes Barrett Bannister. First first down of the night for Missouri. It's a gain of 11 and maybe a little confidence finding throw for Taylor Powell. So watch Kirby Smart. Watch how he he communicates to the secondary. He's telling him, wait, wait, wait. He's look. He, now he's telling them what personnel is on the field to make sure they know. And he will check the secondary. He won't mess around with the front seven and the fronts, but he. When he sees a, a formation of motion, he himself will check to the secondary. That's very unique in college football. Good protection with Powell off the fingertips. And it falls incomplete. Cam Scott, the intended target. And Todd, I know you found this interesting too, in that you know Kirby is so involved on, on a down in and down out basis with this secondary. And you know, they have to get him back just like they would a defensive coordinator. He, he's he's a head coach. There's no question about it. He runs this whole program. But when it comes to game day, he loves it. He loves these opportunities to get his secondary in place. Look at him yelling. He's wearing these guys out. As a player, he still ranks fourth all-time at Georgia in interceptions. Incomplete. Powell was off the mark trying to find Beatty. And this defense will look even better against the inexperienced quarterback making his first start. There's Kirby Smart. <laughs> 13 interceptions. He knows how to find the football, that's for sure. That logo has not changed at all, right? <laughs> Nor no. should it. Yeah, no, perfect. Perfect just the way it is. He's dropped down to six. He's fading <laughs> fast. You know all about that, Grease. <laughs> Falling off those top ten lists. Not yet. Third down and ten. Michigan with a bye today. <laughs> Here's Powell. Pressure's picked up. Now Powell trying to scramble for it. Taking a look around. It's sort of an awkward slide, maybe. Quay Walker, the tackle. It's a gain of nine on the play, and it's fourth down. Yeah, a great lane here for Powell. Just needs to get a little rhythm, get a couple of completions, and get in rhythm. And I think right off the bat, you see Barry Odom. He's going to go for it here on fourth and short on his own side of the, the field, the knowing that uh, we need, in order to stay in this football game, they've got to possess the football a little bit. And I talked to Barry before the game, and he said, you know what? This young man, he, he's got a lot to learn. This is a brutal spot, but he's got all the confidence in the world. Let's see. Before the snap, first charge timeout, Missouri. See if they change their minds of the week. 10 0 Georgia. There was some question as to which team took the timeout, as if both took it simultaneously. The timeout is charged to Missouri, and they were going to go for it. And they have thought that, thought better of that, and now are in punt formation. 
Yeah, that's the right decision. I think Barry Odom just had a minute to think about it. No reason to take that chance this early. Can a short punt. Blaylock. That's Mookie's kid, by the way. A fair catch after the 33-yard punt. There's Matt Barry. Steve Levy, did you know Mookie Blaylock was the original name of Pearl Jam? Neither here nor there. Clemson NC State, first possession of the game. Trevor Lawrence gets in over on ABC, up 7-0 Tigers. Is he making that stuff up? What do you think? Uh, I actually did know that. You didn't know that? No, I was not, not aware. I only, I only knew that because uh, our director, Mike Schwab, told me yesterday. Got it. Big Pearl Jam fan. Yeah. Mookie Blaylock. And I know Schwab knew before Barry. So. <laughs> I think Pearl Jam was a better decision. <laughs> I think they made the right move. <laughs> yes, I'd say so. <laughs> Worked out. <laughs> First down and 10. 10 0 Georgia, starting from their own 23. Here's from. Under pressure will be dropped. Taken down. Nick Bolton on the sack, along with Jarvis Ware. It's a loss of nine. Florida didn't sack him one time a week ago in Jacksonville. Missouri gets to him here. They're going to see Bolton and where they bring the uh, corner. The, when the back picks up the corner, Steve, that frees up the linebacker who had Swift in coverage to then come after the quarterback. They call that a green dog. He's reading the back. When he blocks, he's green to the quarterback. That was perfectly executed. Just the fifth sack this season of Jake Fromm, the fewest among FBS quarterbacks with at least 200 pass attempts. And three of those five now in the season came against South Carolina in that ugly, ugly loss. There's Lawrence Cager on the receiving end. Where the stop? There's Molly. Well, Steve, Georgia center Trey Hill had his left ankle taped so heavily that he had to have medical training staff go get him a bigger shoe. He hobbled back to the locker room, still can't put full weight on his left uh, ankle. But before he left the field, he gave a thumbs up. Burned. All right, Molly, Trey Hill has a lot of experience with Jake from actually blocked for him in high school, didn't snap for him, but he was a starting offensive guard in high school. Here's Fromm now to throw. Under pressure again. Nearly taken down. Dumps it off for Swift. And forward progress. It might give him a yard. And an extra shove or two on that sideline. Missouri not going away. They don't look afraid here tonight. No, especially defensively. And why would they? They come in with a lot of confidence. And that time Whiteside uh, got in the backfield. He's not the tallest defensive lineman at 6'1", but he's got quickness in between Whiteside and Elliott. They feel like they can get some pressure on Jake Fromm tonight, and that time they did. First three and out of the night for Georgia. Camarda back to punt for the second time. Think twice about rushing the punter with these two big guys back here, huh? That's Ben Cleveland <laughs> and Jamari Salyer. Okay, nobody wants to hit those guys. <laughs> they didn't pressure him either. Takes a Missouri bounce. And so the Tigers will start first down and 10 at their own 46 yard line. The Georgia season, how did we get to this point? Way back in September. Remember watching on TV, the game yeah. was electric here with Notre Dame in the house. Playoff champs rose to 46%. Couple of weeks later, also here, lost in double overtime to South Carolina. And then last week, bouncing back in a rivalry game, beating number 10, Florida. And Georgia's odds of making the playoff went up just four points. Well, we, asked, we asked Kirby Smart, Smart if they got better uh, from the loss to South Carolina. He said there's no question it made them better. Yeah, they would have loved to have won the game and still learned a lesson, got the wake-up call. But uh, thankfully for Georgia, it didn't knock them out of anything. Everything is still right in front of them in the SEC and beyond. Good time for Powell. Time for a cup of coffee. Still time. And now we'll throw it away. That must have been great coverage in that Georgia secondary. Yeah, this Georgia secondary, we, we talked about it on the last drive. They communicate so well. LeCount, Reed. Daniel, who's been filling in for an injured Tyson Campbell, who they now have back healthy. There's just nowhere to go with that football. And how about having to play this defense in this house <laughs> as a first-time starter? Tough one for Powell. Dump that one down to Albert O. Across midfield. 
and a stiff arm to get out of bounds. Eric Stokes forced him out. Listen, Powell has some accom accomplishments, but they're all at the high school level. He was the Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year for the whole state, a two-time state champion, and the MVP in both championship games. So look, he's won at whatever level, but now he's at a different level, and he's playing here in Athens tonight. Again, it's the tight end, everybody's favorite target. Okoye Boonham for a gain of 10 down to Mali. Steve, Steve, on the sidelines, Mizzou coaches were telling quarterback Taylor Powell, be aggressive and stop playing scared. Don't be afraid to throw it down the field. You can't win by being conservative. And Powell looked overwhelmed on the sidelines, but teammates were very supportive, saying, calm down, trust us, we got you. you got those saucer eyes going down there, Molly? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and understandable. Off the play fake. Again, he's had a ton of time to throw. Here's Powell. And incomplete. Might have been out of bounds anyway. Okue Boonham, though, went up high. Monty Rice was running wow. with him on the cover. Okue Boonham got away with a push there, too. Rice was in great position. Right there, he pushes Rice down. Surprised that didn't get called, but it was incomplete anyway. Coming down out of bounds. That's that is the matchup that they wanted. That is in favor of Missouri. Okue Boonham on Rice. Rice is 6-1, and Okue Boonham 6-5, and he's their best receiver. Second down and ten. Quick throw and a strong one to Cam Scott. He's got the first down. And you can see Powell developing some confidence. Yeah, he's throwing the ball well on this drive. This is a confident throw coming right at you. Cam Scott off coverage. He hits his back foot and the ball is out. That is a sign of a quarterback that knows exactly what he wants to do, where he wants to go with the ball with an efficient drop. Fifth play of the drive. So it's, it's not saying much, but it is their longest drive of the game so far. Under nine to play in the half. Mizzou looking to cash in with a great starting field position. Here's Roundtree. Lower in the helmet. You hear the crash from Eric Stokes in the contact. Gain of three. Look at the confidence of Powell. A little wink to the receiver. Hey, nice job, kid. <laughs> Not his first year in the program. He was Drew Locke's backup for six games last year. Redshirted in 2017. Top 20 high school quarterback coming out. Second down and seven. Number 24 of Georgia. Powell loads up and throws, and it's intercepted. Richard LeCount down the sideline. He's got blockers in front of him. Richard LeCount, and he will be taken down. There are no flags. Jonathan Nance, the wide receiver on the tackle. It's a 72-yard interception return. Well, the coaches on the sideline may have told Taylor Power, be more aggressive, don't play scared, but you can't force the ball like this. Huey Boonham. And he, he tried earlier on, the, on the, uh, the drive, but here he is right here. This is the definition of double coverage. The protection was good. He forces it in, and LeCount is too good of a football player and a safety to be lax with the football. He will make you pay. Second interception for Richard LeCount. Kirby Smart coaches him up really, really hard because he sees a lot of potential in LeCount. And it pays off there. Georgia off the sudden change. From could not hook up with Kiaris Jackson. AC on the cover. Yeah, really nice coverage from Demarcus AC. The weakness of that defense was in the middle of the field, and AC had coverage on Jackson all over the middle of the field and he undercut that route and forced an in incomplete throw from Fromm. Give Ryan Walters a lot of credit too, the defensive coordinator from Missouri. He's giving Fromm some different looks tonight and usually it's very difficult to, to get Fromm off of his game. Well and these receivers are having a hard time separating Todd from man-to-man -to -man coverage. 
Bad snap. Fromm will scoop it up. Back at the 30. Crowd not appreciating the treatment by Trey Williams on their star quarterback. Yeah, this ball comes up to the left there. Remember, it's Cade Mays, not the starting center, Trey Hill. And watch, oh, watch Williams come up and hit Fromm right there in the head. We, we've seen people flagged for less. Yeah. But a, a costly error there for Georgia offensively. They're second down and, and manageable. And after the sudden change, now it's third and 22. That basically took any chance of converting a third down off the board. You see, you see Kirby thinking. He's got a lot going on in his mind. He's like, I'm not going to take a timeout. No, I'm not going to take a timeout. Don't waste it on third and 22, right? There's a lot as a head coach going through your head. Third and 22 just got worse. Delay a game. The play clock at zero. That's this is the kind of stuff that drives the coach man right we, we, we practice these things right Trey Hill gets hurt injuries happen all the time and we've got to overcome we got a veteran that comes in there at center and now now the quarterback's a little bit flustered the play clock's going down he sees it he says a little discombobulated <laughs> how about third and 27 doctor. Get back in field goal range from the 35. Throw to Cager. It's caught at the 30. Blankenship has a rocket for a leg, as you probably know. It's a gate of four on the play. I say Blankenship might have liked a few more yards there. <laughs> Make it a little bit easier, but this is well within his range. The Rose Bowl record holder, 55 yards. I know Rose Bowl records. Yes, you do. Former MVP of the Rose Bowl, I would imagine you would. 55 is his career long. It was a chippy for him, 48 yard attempt for Rodrigo Blankenship. Out of the hold of Camarda. Plenty good. So George is able to cash in the interception by LeCount, the 72 yard run back. Drive stop and say thanks for everything you do and have done in the past. 13 0 Georgia. Missouri to get the football back. Baby will let it go out of the back of the end zone. Here's Matt Barry. Gentlemen, check it in on Notre Dame and Duke over on ACC Network. Ian Book to chase Claypool. Easy play there. 14 0 Irish into the first quarter on the ACC Network. You know, these Georgia fans are rooting for the Irish, you know, make that strength of record a little bit stronger for the Bulldogs, but I don't think they're going to need any help. The only thing they need to do is win football games. They don't need to worry about anybody else because if they can win out, and next week is a big test too, and they go to the Plains and play the Auburn Tigers in that defense, then uh, they're going to go to Atlanta in the SEC Championship. Finish up against Texas A&M and Georgia Tech. That's Beatty back to the line of scrimmage. Molly? Well, Steve, Mizzou's wide receivers coach Gary McGee not angry with Taylor Powell after that pick, saying it's okay. We opened it up. You don't look afraid anymore. Keep up the confidence and don't be afraid to keep throwing it. Interesting to see how Powell responds on this drive. They'll keep it on the ground of Beatty again, patiently picking his holes. Jay Crowder, the stop game of four on the play. Bring up a third down. Outside of Albert Okui Boone, Beatty is their other big time playmaker. He's the guy that can that can take it the distance. Anytime he touches the football, you know, you can see him running the ball, but but really where he's most effective is as a receiver. Comes into this football game with 22 catches on the season, and you'll see him line up in the backfield, but also out as a wide receiver as he's doing here on this third down at the top of the screen. Had a 74 yard touchdown catch in the loss at Kentucky, 29 to 7. Third and six. Whistles and flags. See if Wallace Sims jumped. Before the snap, all start, number 75, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. That is Trevor Wallace Sims. Senior from East St. Louis. 
Barry Odom tried to get his his offense ready for this this environment, but it's it's different. You know, you go on the road at a place like this, it's going to be loud. The communication's tough. The offensive linemen are under pressure and stress. Inexperienced quarterback. Yep. Missouri already the most penalized team in the SEC coming into this one. So it's third down and 11. They're backed up again. Get some pressure. Powell able to get rid of it. And it will fall incomplete. Four, Nolan Fourth Smith down. The pressure. The pass is incomplete. Nolan the Smith third. had the pressure. Nearly brought him down. Yeah, and Powell is trying to get everyone lined up. You can't hear a thing down here on the field. It's so loud, especially on third down. And it, it seems like he's in control and knows what he's trying to do, but he, there's two or three players almost every single play that are lining up in the wrong spot. So there's a lot of miscommunication pre-snap. This is the kind of game you have a player like Kelly Bryant who comes with all that Clemson experience. Might have been able to handle some of the adversity, but the hamstring unable to go here tonight. Hope to get him back shortly. Here is Jackson on a fair catch after the 40 yard punt. 4-11 left in the half. 13 nothing. Number sense, and I get that. You just. Talk about your own eye test. You're not used to seeing a five next to Clemson. That must seem so far. Yeah, they don't have to worry about that. So, you know, Dabo is all worked up this yep. week. You yep. know, it was one week, you know, just a little bit of humble, humble pie for him. And they'll be right back in at number four next week. You see the remaining undefeated. How about Baylor? Needed a field goal late to force overtime. They were 9 9. Going overtime. Well, and, and row the boat. Row the boat. Yes. I mean, certainly LSU took the day, but row the boat was right behind them because there were a lot of doubters of PJ Fleck and, and that group. But that that offense, Tanner Morgan and those wide receivers, they played outstanding today. Hey, they the deserved. crowd was rocking. Yeah. The stadium was great and mini. Good for them. I'd like to see the programs have been down for a long time. This is their best start since 1904. Not sure what the playoff committee looked like back in 1904, but. Probably was different. Here's Fromm to throw and airmails it over the head of Dominic Blaylock. And it's a fourth down. So that's a reoccurring theme here for Jake Fromm. And, and you, you got to have receivers that can separate. And you have Blaylock there. He's not separating. In the middle of the field, Simmons not separating. I think Georgia, and talking with the offensive coordinator James Coley, I think they're at a point where they need to get guys that are running back swift and harry and those are the guys that can consistently beat man-to-man -man coverage against linebackers they need to get them more into the passing game well it's been a problem all year i mean yeah. they getting down the field vertically this this passing attack has not been what it needs to be it's cager or or bust right floyd the fair catch Credit to Missouri's defense, but the last three times Georgia's had the football. Minus four yards, minus 13 yards. I'm Matt Barry coming up with the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. We'll discuss Georgia's playoff chances, especially with what happened today in LSU. Alabama going down to the wire. Plus, they're still rowing that boat in Minneapolis. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway join me coming up. In fact, Minnesota tweeted out an application, Steve Levy, to get on the bandwagon or the boat wagon at this point. So you can print one out in the press box and sign up. That and more coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. P.J. Fleck, uh, they already gave him the extension last week. I want to lock him up a little longer. Wow, that's, that's, a way to, that's a way to follow it up, right? Yep. Get, a, get a contract. We'll see if they can sustain now, right? They're going to go to Iowa next week. That won't be easy. Roundtree. Out to the 15, gain of three. While we were away in commercial, pick up the phone and call somebody you love, and you see some frustration there. James Coley and, and Jake Fromm, long distance. Yeah, they're just kind of talking it through. And, and, you know, I think what's unique about this, this is a partnership. You know, most times we look at coach to player relationship. Coach tells the player what to do. This is That's not how this works. These two are on the same page. They're on the same page mentally with this offense and they're we're trying to work it through saying listen we're having a hard time separating from man coverage so let's get some crossing some rubs get our backs out and start getting some uh, receivers open against this Missouri defense we documented earlier how good this Missouri defense is and George is feeling the effects of that right now I'll start number 81 offense five yard penalty still second down 
This is something that that Georgia has been doing a lot more of is the stemming by their defensive line. Watch them. They're all stemmed together. There's a move from the linebacker. And when they shift, sometimes they'll get an offensive lineman or a tight end, in this case, Okui Boonham, to, to jump off. They've done it consistently the last couple of weeks. It's been effective. Missouri offense scored 31 points or more in each of the first six games of the season. They were off to that great 5-1 and one start and then uh, only managing 14 points and 7 points each of the last two weeks. Yeah, there were a lot of people that thought that Missouri coming into the season could potentially be 8-0 coming yes, into this one. game. They had been favored in every single game this season prior to tonight. Expectations were high. And we've seen Coach Odom. They've, they've started slowly, have great second halves. Yeah. His November record is outstanding. Well, he, this season, kind of the opposite. They get off to the big start. He's been great, you know, coming off of, of tough losses. You know, he went into Florida last year and got a big win down there. Uh, they stumbled right out of the gate, as you see, Wyoming, against Wyoming. Yeah. But the two losses that Vanderbilt and then at, at Kentucky, those are games you're supposed to win. Okay. And, and those were embarrassing losses. And look what they did to South Carolina. The team that nearly destroyed Georgia's season right here. But uh, but the bye week came at a good time for them this past week. So they've made some changes and they've come out and competed in this one. Second down and 12. Here's Powell from his own goal line. Shovels it to Roundtree with some running room. And get out to the 18-yard line. Pickup of eight. DJ Daniel forced him out. You got to be careful with the football back here for Taylor Powell. And I know that sometimes things break down and then, then you go into the backyard mode, but you're right before half. You're, it's still a two score game down 13 nothing. Be really careful ad living in the shadow of your own goal line. Still two timeouts. Third and three. Looks like they got Georgia to jump. Might be a free play. Why not take a shot? Oh, and the outstretched arms of Cam Scott. Got a hand on it, couldn't get two on it. That's a great job by Powell, recognizing that he had gotten the defense to jump. And Scott has to lay out for this. You have to do everything you possibly can to catch that football for your Outside, team and your quarterback. That's poor effort. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That's the play Missouri needed. Cam Scott, sophomore from Texas, broke in in a big way. His first career reception was a 70-yard touchdown last season and nearly made the big play. So, you know, receivers, you got to get two hands on the football. There's no reason to put one didn't hand even try, out Brian. there, you know, and you see receivers that will dive with two hands out. He didn't even dive. He didn't he didn't try to get two hands on it. It's like he wanted to go after it with one hand. 90 seconds ago on the half. Missouri's run of the football with Roundtree. Azizo Jalari made the stop. Another flag. That'll stop the clock. And a Georgia player hits the deck. Yeah, and, and yeah, guess who? It's second flag. Yeah, it's, and it's Cam Scott that's in there instigating. You know, after he gives poor effort on one play, he comes back and he hurts his team on the next. And he's going to get an earful from oh, Barry Odom. Man, I can guarantee you that. Coaching staff told us about Scott that he is emotional. He wants to win and that you hear him before you see him. Well, Barry Odom doesn't want to hear anything from Cam Scott right now. As they sort out the penalties, and there's the conversation. You can say, he said, look at me. It doesn't matter what happens. you got to keep your cool. And, you know, he's trying to implement a program here that has discipline. That's who Barry Odom is. And he coaches defensive guys, and now he's coaching his offensive guy to say, listen, I need you to mature. I need you to After grow up. play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 offense. Penalty is 15 yards. Correction, half the distance to the goal. It is second down. That is number 13's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Yeah, they're brutal back-to-back -back plays for Cam Scott. It's frustrating. I get it, you know, and, and you just can't continue to come on the road like this. And he's got a lot of fire to him, which which is good. But you got to be able to harness that at the right time and have discipline. And Cam Scott's trying to learn that. Just a sophomore. He will learn from that experience. They actually thought the officials gave him a lot of rope. He threw four or five pushes or punches and finally got flagged in the last one. Well, you know what happens when, when you drop a pass like that, then, then the defense gets in your ear. And so it, it wasn't just what you saw. It's probably what he heard that really tipped him off. Great point. Well, coming up on the final minute of the half. Now second and 19. 
draw. Handle on a frown tree. Lowers the shoulder. Take on some people. And he's out of bounds to 22. I would call a timeout here if I, was, if I was Georgia. Good idea. Georgia's got two left. Todd, did you see that hit from Richard the Count? I mean, he's he's not the biggest guy, 190 pounds, but he comes up there. And I don't, he didn't get a lot of round tree on the ground, but he certainly delivered a blow. This is a guy I think is going to play a long time at the next level. And talking with Kirby Smart about him, said he's very instinctual. He diagnoses routes. Uh, he would love him to communicate a little more and be a little more on the P's and Q's with respect to his assignments. But he's kind of like uh, an Ed Reed. Sometimes he will ad lib and go do something crazy, but he'll make the play. And Powell will spend a timeout with the play clock down to zeros. Georgia didn't have to take a timeout there because they went out of bounds. So that stopped the clock. I was going to go Troy Palomalo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just a guy who. You watch him and you say, well, what is, what's he doing? What's he reading? And then he goes and makes the play. Palomalo was, he was around the line of scrimmage a whole lot. I, I, LeCount, to me, plays deeper. And, and Ed Reed, nobody is Ed Reed, okay? I'm no, not comparing no. him to Ed Reed. But I'm just saying that sometimes, I remember when I would prepare to play Ed Reed, he would be in positions he wasn't supposed to be in. And I would think to myself, how does he know that I'm trying to throw the ball over there? I threw an interception to him one time, and he was completely on the wrong side of the field. <laughs> and uh, I asked him after the game, I said, how did you know? He's like, come on, man. I read everything. Right. You know? well, but that's what that's what the count is. He, he sees things, and he's instinctual, and that's what you need as a safety. Was that was Ed Reed the player that Tom Brady had written down on his wristband with the plays to check where Ed Reed is on every <laughs> single play? Smart. Yeah. Third down and 11 out of the Mizzou timeout. Still in the ball game here, down 13 0. Final minute and a half. Trying to set up the screen to Beatty. And he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss. Fourth down. It's great effort there from the George defensive w lineman, Trevon Walker, yeah. Georgia will spend the time out here to keep some clock. There he is right here, number 44. He's, just, he's a true freshman, and they are excited about him because he's a big man, 6'5", 290 pounds, but he can really run. And you see him run down the screen here. He actually runs down on kickoffs, Steve. He's, <laughs> to my knowledge, the only defensive lineman to be on a kickoff team. That is how talented Trevon Walker is. He's an athletic marvel, uh, and they're really excited about his future here. One of the fastest guys on the team at 6'5", 290, and again, redshirt freshman, that means he's going to get bigger. Probably get faster, too. Well, he missed the, uh, the Kentucky and South Carolina games with the wrist surgery. He's just a pup. I mean, look, he looks young, 18 years old, and he's going to be a heck of a player. There's McCann. Standing at his own six. See if we get some pressure from Georgia here. 47 seconds left. No, they back off and set up for the return. Blaylock hit immediately at the 38 yard line. Blaylock. Great play there from Khalil Oliver on the punt team. Getting down and making. Making that play if you give up a return there all of a sudden it brings in a field goal potentially before half into play. But Georgia hadn't been able to get much going on on offense. Give uh, credit to this Missouri defense. They have been aggressive. Troy Walters their defensive coordinator told us yesterday that they were going to come into this game to win and they were not going to change who they are which is being aggressive and coming after Jake Fromm. and they've been able to cover the receivers. You see the total yards in the second quarter. That's interesting. Minus six for Georgia. How you want to play this for the Bulldogs here with one timeout left? We'll try the draw with Swift on first down. Jordan Elliott to stop and a timeout. Georgia will take their last timeout. Well, Kirby Smart says if I can pop a draw here, then maybe I'll make a decision to, to get more aggressive. Uh, but if it were me, I would give. I have 100% confidence in Jake Fromm. I would be aggressive. This is a two-score game, 13-0. You you know that Missouri's defense has confidence, but I would give Cager a chance because you know Missouri's going to play man-to-man, -man, and if he's matched up against Jarvis Ware, just give him a chance down the field, and you can get into Rodrigo Blankenship uh, range pretty quickly. And Georgia will get the ball to start the second half. There's no risk there.
Speaking of Blankenship, I think the uh, the South Carolina Blues are gone from him. I, I've been impressed with the way he put that miss in overtime behind him. He's moved forward uh, and he has really gotten back his rhythm. He was wearing those pink cleats. Wears pink at home, silver bullets on the road. Hashtag res respect the specs. Here's Throb, exactly. Greece, just as you suggested, get a big play to Cager for 30 yards, taking virtually no time off the clock. Yeah, why not uh, put the ball in the hands of your best players, Jake Fromm and Lawrence Cager? It's not man to man. Instead, it's too deep and a great read from Jake Fromm to know how to throw that ball in the hole. And now Cager is down at the 33 yard line after making that catch. Yeah, he took a hard hit from. Gillespie Tyree Gillespie the safety and you hope that he just got his uh, wind knocked out of him. Great concentration you know you're going to get hit as a receiver when you throw that hole shot in too deep and Gillespie comes up I think that's a clean hit there's no issues with that. Right in between the corner where and Gillespie. The cager grab gives Georgia their first first down of the second quarter. Well, you think how much Lawrence Cager means to this offense. Like if he didn't, if he didn't decide to transfer to Georgia, where this offense would be, uh, and for that matter, Eli Wolf, the tight end, who's our leading receiver at the tight end position, well, look at uh, that. transferred in as well. And I don't think that's the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of pain. unfortunately, yeah. And the reason there were opportunities for Cager and Wolf. Really Georgia lost five of their top receivers from a year ago. A couple of guys left early for the NFL. Nicole Hardman and Riley Ridley. Um, including Isaac Nada, the tight end is among their leading receivers. Yeah. Actually the running back was their top returning returning receiver. Of the wideouts they had just 13 catches coming back. So that opened up spots for the, the transfers the graduate transfers. And that would be a huge loss if they lose Cager. He wasn't moving that left arm at all. 24 seconds left. Here's Fromm. And Pickens went up for it with one arm. Jarvis Ware on the coverage. Yep, there's that one hand, right? We mentioned it earlier. The, the coaches yeah. are on him because all these guys want to be Odell Beckham Jr. and make the catch. Listen, this this drives me crazy. Okay, it's 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 becoming a problem in football. And Kirby Smart's telling the same thing. Like, listen, you got two hands. You know, God gave you two hands. Use both of them to go up and catch the football. And Lawrence Cager does it. Follow him. He's the, he's the one that that leads this this unit. And you're right. It's become such a problem with Perkins that they actually tell him to do push-ups when he doesn't go up with two hands. In practice, he's got to do 20 push-ups every time he goes up with a one-handed grab. Even if he makes the catch <laughs> and only only 20 because they need him for the next series. <laughs> and there's big. Yeah, there's the one handed. Yeah. It's an epidemic. It really is. And everybody wants to be on sports center top 10 and make that play. I, I tell you this. I wouldn't throw the ball his way. OK like that 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 will cure it. OK if Jake Fromm says listen kid uh, I love you you're you're you know high recruit. All these things, but I need you to, to give me max effort and do things the right way. The details, as Kirby Smart loves to say, and that is go up with two hands. And if you do go up with one, you better make the Odell Beckham Jr. catch and hang on. Here's Fromm loading up just too far beyond the outstretched arms of Kieris Jackson. He gave you the full effort yeah. there. That was a great route from Jackson and just thrown a little bit too far. Great effort there. Look at his layout, right? Compare that to Cam Scott on the other side. No comparison. Right. I mean, that's how you do it. You give everything and just a little bit too far. 47 yard field goal attempt. Kirby wanted six. Let's see if he settles for three here. Blankenships. On the way. And it just curves in and good. And that'll do it. Zeros on the clock. Blankenship connects. And Georgia will go to the locker room.
a 16 nothing lead 16 point lead but the big thing that uh, the dog nation is wondering is what about Lawrence Cager send you back to Matt Joey and Jesse fellas who likely needs an opponent in the SEC championship game upcoming as we hit December but for now still November with Brian Greasy I'm Steve Levy and you look at that second quarter Georgia had just 26 yards of offense yeah. and now their top playmaker the number one go to guy for Jake Fromm could be out. Yeah certainly a concern because he is their top playmaker and really they haven't had consistent production from the wide receiver position outside of Lawrence Cager so we'll see if he's able to come back in this football game. It's kind of an odd play he got hurt on made a terrific catch down the sideline. We'll check you with Molly see if she has anything to add on the injury. Georgia doesn't get a whole lot of sympathy from folks around the country, nor would they want it. And the Bulldogs will get the ball first to open up the third quarter. Jake Fromm will start out at the 25-yard line. Here's the play in which Cager was hurt. So well, that's the first couple of catches that was in the first quarter. You know, he was making plays downfield, and he was going after where this is the last play he got hurt on, and it's tough to tell what happened. He got up, and then he was walking off, and he and he kind of caught himself and went back down, and he didn't move that left arm a whole lot. Uh, you know, that could be that could be anything. He took a hit in the ribs, maybe, but it's hard to speculate. But he's not out there on the field right now. Six catches, 93 yards for Lawrence Cager in that first half. From the 25, from on the ground to DeAndre Swift. On first down, he's got first down yardage and running away from people on the Missouri side of the field and he spins down to the 26. It's a gain of 47 on the first play from scrimmage. Look at this cut. Two cuts. First one right here on the inside, and then another one, a shallow cut on Gillespie, the safety. And that, that is the talent from DeAndre Swift. And you know Kirby Smart was in that locker room. He said it to Molly on the way in. We got to run the football. And on the first play in the second half, that's exactly what they do. Especially now with the injury to Cager, more emphasis on the run game. On first down and 10, it's Swift again. Why not? Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Steve, Georgia wide receiver Lawrence Cager's left shoulder was hanging by his side when he left the field at halftime. And that is the same shoulder that he separated earlier this season. I'm told that he is out for the rest of the game with the left shoulder injury. He has not returned to the field. And also Georgia's starting center Trey Hill also out with a left ankle injury. Two big time players on this Georgia offense. Yeah, that is that is not a good sign for Kirby Smart and he Cager if you go back and look it he, he did come down on the ground on that left shoulder. Second down and six here's Harrion. He's taken for a loss. Nick Bolton the top tackler in the SEC for a two yard loss. I can take one last look at Cager when he comes down. watch his left shoulder when he comes down on the sideline right there. It wasn't it wasn't a whole lot but after you've injured that shoulder already this season uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to re aggravate that and we wondered all week Jake Fromm and the trusting of his receivers there's Cager and who's behind him and now someone will have to emerge someone that Fromm feels comfortable throwing to in a big spot like right here third down and eight at the 26 of Mizzou Fromm Left end zone. Looking for Pickens. Jarvis Ware on the coverage. There are no flags. Boy, you see the speed of George Pickens. He runs right by Ware. But Ware doesn't give up. Gets back in there. Just gets a hand up. There is no face guarding. Has a great job of recovering from Jarvis Ware. Here's Blankenship. 43-yard attempt. He made all all nine points in the second quarter on his three field goals. Three time grows a semifinalist. Rodrigo Blankenship and no good. Missed it to the left. And the score remains 16 to nothing. Now this is exactly how he missed in the overtime against South Carolina. He missed just to the left. 
been such a consistent quality kicker for so long here. You know, talking with Kirby Smart, he he says he doesn't know what he's going to do next year after he doesn't have blanket ship. He's never not had a great kicker here at Georgia in his time because he's been here all four years and he, he really doesn't know what he doesn't know when uh, blanket ship graduates. Blanket ship the fifth on the all time scoring list in the SEC. Came into this one with 389 total points. And again, he has three field goals, but misses there, keeping Missouri in the game. Larry Roundtree, ball carry. It really is amazing that Missouri is in this football game with that, with zero offensive production. They have not been able to get anything going, and we knew it was going to be a challenge with Powell subbing in for Kelly Bryant with that hamstring injury. But is there some way for them to find some kind of offense? They haven't been able to run it. And they really haven't had a lot of consistency throwing it either. Roundtree ran into his own player. Ran into tight end Daniel Parker, who's been so important in that Missouri running game for a loss of two. It hasn't been pretty tonight. But yeah, guys falling down without being touched. And, you know, we talk about Taylor Powell and how difficult this environment is he's not getting a whole lot of help from his teammates either Georgia rushing just four not gonna matter Powell is dropped for the sack Aziz Ojolari and Quay Walker combine on the sack and there's tight windows. There are some throws to be made for Taylor Powell. He wants to throw this ball out here to, to Beatty. It's really well covered. The ball should end up coming right here on the shallow cross. It's not a big window. It's just enough, but that's his only throw. That's a tough assignment for Powell to go from one to two to three in this environment. The fifth three and out for Missouri. Tucker McCann punting for the seventh time. Blaylock from the 37. Dominic Blaylock across midfield, little stutter step. And he's forced out on the Missouri side of the field. 40 all year long, yep. every single, each and every day. DeAndre Swift trying to turn the corner. Gain of three, Jarvis Ware the tackle. We're going to see a lot of Swift this half. Yeah, right. Todd, I've been impressed with Jarvis Ware. You know, he's he's been uh, uh, good in pass coverage. He's been in man-to-man uh, -man on Lawrence Cage, and on Cage has made some plays on him. But then you see him in the run game coming up and, and being physical, making an open field tackle on, on Swift, who's one of the most difficult guys to get down in the open field. Herrian checks in now. Second down and seven at the 44 of the Tigers. Off the play fake. Fromm completes the pickings. And he has first down yardage, gain of nine on the play. Jake Fromm came in completing 70% of his passes. That improves to 79% off play action right, right there. And, and right there, as I give a compliment to where he's he's beaten. In, in I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> but, but you could see, like, he's really worried about the speed of yeah. George Pickens. Like, he was much too far off on Pickens, and, and I think it was because of the way the Pickens ran by him on that uh, previous drive almost gave up the touchdown. That's Tyler Simmons top of your screen. Robertson they're going to give it to him. Demetrius Robinson. Leaping over a teammate. Crashes down at the 19. Demetrius Robertson he hopped over Charlie Werner for a gain of 16. Really nice effort from Warner. You see him come from the opposite side. He just gets a little piece of Josh Bledsoe there. Gets another eight or eight or ten yards for Robertson. Running the ball. That's exactly what Kirby Smart wanted to do here in the second half. It's been swift. One pass to George Perkins on this drive, and then the run to Robertson. See Jake Fromm. A lot of people think that. 
He's just checking in the run in the pass game, but he's also checking in the run game. From under center, here's Herrian. The hard run there, Tyree Gillespie. Ron L. Perkins gain a six, which is not easy to do uh, from a quarterback position. You know, the, you're always thinking about protections and pass routes and defenses and coverages, and not a lot of quarterbacks take the time to learn the run game. But Jake Fromm has, and it's helped this team. Then the grandson, J.T. Dooley, is, <laughs> is on the Georgia staff. Was a wide receiver on the team last year. Got injured. Maybe wants to get in the family business. That's pretty cool. You know, we were talking with with Derek about JT. Unfortunately, he had back surgery uh, this uh, this summer, and he's had to kind of hang up the cleats. He was a, a receiver for Georgia last year, but uh, I think he I think he might have a, a future here, Coach. Here's James Cook, the ball carrier. I do know this. At 87, Vince Dooley's not slowing down. <laughs> Very at active. All yard work every day, meet and greets, <laughs> writing books. <laughs> There's JT. He signals in some of the uh, offensive plays, so he's working. So that's pretty cool. Three generations right here tonight. But he said he could, couldn't talk to Dad this week. That was the deal. Yeah, that's a rule. No texting. All right, Derek says we go dark starting on Sunday of the week we're about to play each other. And so uh, they had an embrace. I'm not sure they spoke. We saw the still picture. <laughs> Maybe they didn't speak. They just shook hands. Maybe a hug. And they'll, uh, they'll talk afterwards. No doubt who... Uh, Grandpa's rooting for it tonight. Derek is on his own. Third down and two. From end zone, knocked away. Trying to go to Eli Wolf. Tyree Gillespie broke it up. That might have been the first time Wolf's been targeted all night. Yeah, he was wide open. Great play design. It's just underthrown. Here he is right here. He's going to come out. But watch Jake Fromm. The thing that, that worries me about Jake Fromm, look, this is wide open, right? But look at his feet. He doesn't drive through with his feet on this throw, and that's why it's short. If there's one thing that, that I see with Jake Fromm that, that he can get better at, it is really working on his lower body and driving through throws. He missed that one. And he knows. He knows. 29-yard field goal attempt for Rodrigo Blankenship. Missed the last one. And cut that one pretty close. Egg, respect the specs. Yeah, my son wears glasses, right? And I, I so want him, one of my yeah, kids. I want, I want him to see, you know, guys like Rodrigo Blankenship yep. that uh, that do it the right way on and off the field. Hey, he makes that look cool, huh? <laughs> He's got no problem walking around. Pretty cool name too, Rodrigo Blankenship, 98 in your program, number one in your heart. The Georgia record, by the way, for field goals made in the game six. Philly bet it in 2001. We'll see if Rodrigo has a crack at that tonight. And you know Kirby Smart's not happy with that. The red zone offense. Here's out Powell in some trouble. Escaped and now taken down. It's Nolan Smith. The sack, Lawson Ida on the play. Smith among the top high school recruits in the country a year ago coming to Georgia. Well, they're just trying to, to run a rollout to protect Powell from this rush. But uh, you can see the inexperience, right? When you have a rollout to one side, you never, ever retrace and go back the other way because you're not blocked on that side. And there's nothing that uh, Powell can do. It's an easy sack. Second and 19. Again, no Kelly Bryant. The hamstring injury did not heal during the week. Throw and catch to Jonathan Nance. Good lick out of bounds by Richard LeCount. Gain of 20 on the play. Mentioned Nolan Smith. And that gets into Georgia and they're recruiting. Things have been just fine and dandy in that department since Kirby Smith came along. Kirby Smart, I beg your pardon. Yeah, well, Smith was the number two overall recruit behind Kayvon Thibodeau out in uh, Oregon. You can play with those numbers, all right? Georgia has him as he was the number right, one right. overall recruit. But, but the bottom line, you yeah. see the last three years, they've been top three recruiting, and a lot of that has been on the offensive and defensive lines. And that's been, I think, the biggest difference for Kirby Smart. He said they're kind of we're, we're similar from a skill set. Standpoint. Baby trying to cut back, forget about it. Runs in a big 99, Jordan Davis, maybe the biggest man on the field at 6'6, 
They list him at 330. We think he's closer to 350, maybe 360. <laughs> and you can't move the guy. I mean, he's fun to watch. He really is. He's here classic 3-4 nose tackle, middle of the defense. And you see double teams where he literally just stands right there and doesn't move an inch. Third down and five. Mizzou just one of eight on third down conversion attempts. And that one is dropped. Okoye Boonham couldn't come up with that one. Tyreek Stevenson on the coverage. Looked like a pretty good ball from Powell there. Yeah, it could have been out on the sideline. This, uh, Okoye Boonham's expecting it to be on the sideline. It's a little bit inside. He's got to go back, and that's that allows Tyreek Stevenson to get a hand on that football. But again, they have the matchup they wanted. Their best player, Okoye Boonham, on a true freshman Stevenson, and a more accurate ball might have got a first down. Here's McCann. Nice punt. Drives Blaylock back to the 14. And he'll be taken down by a host of bodies. It's a 46 yard punt from Tucker McCann. She's a big fella. Kirby Smart, Georgia defense. Gets the quarterback making his first start or his 20th. That's still incredibly impressive. 24 scoreless quarters. Tied for the most along with Ohio State. They got the defensive part figured out. Dawson downing off the fingers. Third down. It'll be interesting to see. And I know there's a big game, you know, next week on the Plains against Auburn. And they still have Texas A&M. But you can't help but start to think about this Georgia team and what they would look like against LSU in, in the championship game in Atlanta, right? If those two teams continue to win out and, and get there, uh, this this defense is fashioned just like Alabama's defense and we saw what happened to them today. Try to go to Albert O. Kui Boonham couldn't haul that one in and it's another three and out. But I think this Georgia defense is a better version of Alabama. It's the same style uh, but I think they've got better players more experienced players right now on this Georgia defense than they do at Alabama and to me it starts in the secondary with Reed and LeCount, those two guys uh, really have played at a high level this season for Georgia. You saw what Joe Burrow did to that Alabama defense. Yeah. Do you think that's similar to the Georgia defense? Well, nobody's going to stop LSU. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. The question is, will Georgia have enough, enough offense to keep up? It was Kyrus Jackson. Thought he was taken down in a good second effort. And he's out to the 33-yard line. 52-yard punt by Tucker McCann. Two minutes into the fourth. 27 and fight songs and costume style. So. Taco Bell celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Georgia Bulldogs student section and Uga, you know, he's already on the national watch list. You can go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell, see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss student section contest as we mentioned every week you can get Molly's attention on Twitter now, I'd like to know what Molly thinks of the uh, spike squad down there so Molly rates every single week does she the student sections from around the country what kind of grade are you going to give the Georgia crowd next I'm, week I'm going to give them a pretty good grade they showed up early and they're staying late despite the uh, big disparity in this game so I, I love Georgia student section all right it looks like it just started with the shoulder pads and then the spikes and then then the paint we need a Molly big board. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Todd. Hey, but in a fight, I'm going to go with the guy from the black hole in Oakland, though. But if push comes to shove, yeah. they get the spike squad or the black hole, I'm going to lean towards the black hole. <laughs> Anybody coming with me? You had an experience in the black hole this uh, Yeah. Right? Did you cool go down spot. there? The Chucky doll? Yeah, yeah, that's a scary spot. <laughs> All right, that guy looks serious. It's like sort of like a Georgia Captain America thing going on there. What about the red visor? That just doesn't seem to fit in there. <laughs> no. Hey, I'll, I'll wear the red visor tonight. It's third and 11 now. <laughs> Get back to the game. There's some pressure coming from Missouri. Bob lost will get a man middle of the field. Who else? It's George Pickens for the hat trick. Three touchdown catches. That one for 68 and the score. And it's all Georgia now. 
And there is a flag down. Way back in the 30 yard line. Formation. Five players in the backfield on the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. All for naught. Coming back. Boy, Jake Fromm did everything there. He got the protection lined up. I think it's they're going to call it right here on the on the tackle. But he got everything picked up protection wise. He had the perfect play call to Pickens down the middle. Uh, all for not. And the thing that's so impressive. I know it's a penalty and they're walking it back but just watching him manage inside the pocket feeling pressure on the outside He's a quarterback. You got to climb the ladder. You got to get good up. That's what he does. He trusts his protection. He knows when when there's pressure coming and he just kind of has a, a, a sense about it. It's very unique for a young quarterback. Todd that was Pickens who was supposed to be on the line of scrimmage because the tight end was off and when the tight ends off one of the receivers to his side need to be on the ball. So right. that just goes to show you the <laughs> pull your hair out with these young guys. Here's from looking for Robertson there and it's incomplete. And another tackle for Georgia on the oh, still down on the field. Is that Isaiah Wilson? It is. Oh my goodness. That would be the third offensive lineman that Georgia has lost in this game alone. They go right, right down the line. Center, right guard, right tackle now. Wow. Well, they're going to win this football game, but at what cost? With a huge game coming up next week against Auburn. It is right here. He gets hit by. And you would think they'd get Jake Fromm out of there. He's lost three starting offensive linemen tonight. Yeah, Trey Hill goes down, and then his backup, Cade Mays, goes down. And then Lawrence Cager, right before half, uh, hurts that shoulder again. So, um, like we said, uh, this this is going to be could be a costly victory for Georgia. Uh, but they're really fortunate that they've got a lot of depth on that offensive line. You got two of those offensive linemen, Cleveland and Salyer, standing in front of Camarda, the punter. And the pressure comes. It might have been some contact. Camarda went down like a spinning top as the ball bounces out of bounds. There are a couple of flags. Out of bounds. It looks like this might be the running into the kicker variety of five yards and if it is I don't think that uh, Kirby Smart is going to accept it because that was a pretty good punt Coming out of bounds around the 20 it was fourth and 16. Yeah. Personal foul though would be automatic first down running into the kicker number 58 defense the penalties decline first down. Goes as a 53 yard punt. But we're watching for the contact. Yeah, I got a piece of it. Missouri has 10 possessions, six of them three and outs, nine have gone for punts. And Connor Bazelak is in the game at quarterback, taking snaps in relief of Taylor Powell. Beatty is contact, and the crowd enjoys that. Take Crowder with a big time lick on Beatty for six yard game. Connor Bazelak is a true freshman from Dayton, Ohio, and one of the great compliments from the coaching staff says so he's got the best arm on the roster. Can make every throw at the best arm of the quarterbacks right now. Let's see, we get a look at that here tonight. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a good place to start with a good arm, and I just got to learn what to do. Oh, that's <laughs> it. That little thing. <laughs> Beatty going nowhere. Maybe backwards even. Yeah, and if I'm Barry Odom, I'm I'm, I'm taking Beatty out of this game. I mean, he's he's one of your top playmakers. He and Albert o Okui Boonham and. Uh, you don't want to lose either one of those guys and you might lose this 
battle, but you don't want to lose them for the war either. And along those lines, Greece, I get the sense that Kelly Bryant was pretty close to going, but they didn't want to risk him for the rest of the way. So maybe they sacrificed this one, a game they probably weren't going to win anyway. For games down the stretch, Tennessee and Arkansas that they might be able to win. Well, I talked to Barry Odom before the game, and he, of course, didn't say that. He's a competitor just like everyone, but... He said multiple times that he just had to talk his quarterback out of it, basically. He's like, I have a medical staff, and they said he, he's not ready to go, and I've got to trust him. But, but boy, Kelly Bryant really wanted to play and was begging me to be on this field. But it's the right thing for the young man, and it's yeah. the right thing for our program for the rest of the year. We just don't want to lose him for the rest of the season. Yeah. Taylor Powell was 10 of 22, 84 yards through the one interception. Early. He wasn't going to be the difference, right, in this game. There was nothing Kelly Bryant was going to do that's going to make a difference tonight. So I, I agree with Barry Odom. We'll keep him for uh, the next three games. Meanwhile, the Bazelak's throwing the ball pretty good out here. He's got two completions here. One to told you he had the boom. best arm of the roster. <laughs> What'd you expect? <laughs> Florida comes a call to Columbia next week, then Tennessee at home, and then at Arkansas to finish the schedule. And Missouri's got some other things there were. They're still waiting on the NCAA. Yeah, for, that's uh, a ruling crazy. on their appeal, which is seemingly, well, not just seemingly, actually been going on forever. So we approach nine minutes left in the fourth. Dump it off to Beatty's across midfield. Has the first down yardage. I know the NCAA is a seems to be a target, right? Everyone takes shots at him, and, and I understand. But in this case, what what are we doing? <laughs> Great question. It's the age old. What are we doing? Well, the, yeah, the, the postseason ban was, the, and the sanctions were handed down on January 31st, and then they appealed and. July as you see that uh, completion and Molly's got the rest of the story. Yeah, you know, in previous cases, the committee takes four to eight weeks to respond after they see the appeals committee. Um, and when I asked Barry Odom about it, you could tell he was really, really upset about it. He was extremely frustrated. He admitted that it weighs on him and his team. He said in a 24 hour period of time, he thinks about this once every five minutes. That's a lot. So it's definitely taken over his mind, Steve. Thank you, Molly. Second down and four. Dawson downing. Nothing doing there. And I think a lot of that is because of recruiting. Of right? course it is. Yeah, the, the signing day is less than a month away, and Barry Odom needs to, to know kind of what, what sanctions he's operating under. And, you're, and here was my takeaway line. Odom said there are kids who were in eighth grade when this went down that are going to be directly impacted by this if the NCAA, in fact, does come down on the program. Well, they have come down. It's just whether they accept the appeal and take away the postseason ban. Hard hit. Dominic Jacinto, his first grab. And young quarterback, young Connor there is five for five passing. Yeah, uh, Jacinto might have something to say to the quarterback when he comes back to the huddle. Like, uh, yeah, we got a first down, bud, but. Uh, might not want to lead me into that roll corner next time. <laughs> he just met DJ Daniel. He's done a yeah. nice job filling in for Tyson Campbell. Well, it's a good looking drive. This is, you know, the number two defense uh, pretty much for, for Georgia out there. Well, you see Big 99, he's still in there. Jordan Davis at nose guard. Basilak throwing it. Took out a few hedges. Monty Rice had the pressure. Just got introduced to Monty Rice. <laughs> hey, so, you know, the NCAA coming down on Missouri, the, the bowl ban is not necessarily in effect because if they don't rule, no ruling would allow Missouri to potentially play in a bowl game this season. Well, there's going to be a ruling. Like it's any day now. It should have been a long time ago. ago sure. it'll, it'll be before the bowl season. They expected sure. it a month ago. Here's the 11th play of the drive coming up. Down the sideline, Jalen Knox targeted for the first time tonight, I believe. DJ Daniel, the coverage for Georgia. So that's seven to go. That's an example of a young quarterback right there reading the receiver, right? When when he's not beyond the corner, you need to throw it on the back shoulder. And so, right when he gets to this position right here, you got to say, okay, well, I got to throw it on the back shoulder and not down the field. And that's just experience. And 
There's no way to, to get that timing down without actually having the reps. So this is good for a Basilak to get some live game reps in this situation. Third down and ten. Caught Barrett Bannister. And a host of new names are being introduced for this Missouri offense. This is now their deepest penetration into Georgia territory as they have the ball the Georgia 16. Downing the ball carrier to the 10. And now cracks down inside the five yard line. These Georgia fans, they certainly want to see a shutout, but a, a real sense of pride has been not allowing a single rushing touchdown all season. Yeah, 12 men on the field on that last play. I think they're just going to decline it, take that run, and have first and goal. Fraction, defense had too many players on the field. The penalties declined. The result of the play is a first down. Well, and you know that Missouri wants to get some some points on the board and after scoring four rushing touchdowns in this game a year ago against Georgia you would anticipate that they're going to try to run this ball in too. They're bringing in the heavy package both tight ends are coming in. And if you watch Kirby smart on the sideline nobody on the field <laughs> wants more than him. <laughs> well the starters still in there on the Georgia defense. On the ground downing. Won't get there. Stopped at the two and a half second and goal. They did bring two starters back into the game. They brought David Marshall and Jermaine Johnson off the sideline when the substitutions came in. So there's no question they want to keep these guys out of the end zone on the ground. Of the previous eight meetings all time, Georgia and Missouri, Bulldogs able to shut the Tigers out twice. Two of the previous eight. Let's see if they keep them out of the end zone here. Second down and goal. And a timeout. Yeah, Barry Odom called the timeout. And if you. They got the big back in there, Dawson Downing at 225 pounds. So you're calling for play action here, huh? I play action to <laughs> Okue Boonham. Second and goal. Again, Georgia has yet to allow a rushing touchdown all season. Hand it off. Dawson Downing not going to be this time either. Monty Rice for a loss. It's Monty Rice. Here he is right here. He's just going to come off the edge. Tim Lanning, their defensive coordinator, deciding to bring pressure. And that not only does that keep him out of the end zone, but now it puts him in a situation where they almost have to throw the football to get it in on third down from the five. Might be the loudest this crowd's been all night. <laughs> <laughs> they want the shutout. Third and goal from the five. To throw for it. Back of the end zone off the fingertips of Jonathan Nance. And into some hedges. And it's fourth down. That's a good throw from Basilak. He gave him a chance. Would have been a tough catch for Nance, but they're going to go for it here on fourth down, obviously. Surprised they didn't even have Okue Boonham in the game on the last snap. He's back in there now. They've got three wide receivers to one side of the field, and Okue Boonham is by himself at the top of the screen up here. Man, this shutout's important to Georgia. You can tell. Up 27 0. Fourth and goal from the five. Basilak. To throw for it. One handed, and Jacinto can't come up with it. Mark Webb had the coverage, and they'll turn it over on downs, and the goose egg remains on the Missouri side of the scoreboard. Well, Jacinto had a chance at it. We talk, I don't even know if he could have got two hands. We talked a lot about receivers getting two hands up tonight. And I think I think he needed to go with one hand just to be able to get a hand on the ball to try to bring it back down and make that catch would have been a spectacular catch. But give credit to this Georgia defense. They have come out. They have played excellent football all night long. <laughs> I love the sideline antics of, of Kirby Smart. He's got all the body movements going. He just loves to play. He loves to coach and loves to win. And you can tell every single time he comes out. 
What if I told you Jake Fromm was still in the game for Georgia? <clears throat> so you expect some handoffs. Got it. As scripted, Zamir White. Devin Nicholson brought him down. I couldn't Chances get Fromm is. off of this field fast enough. Yeah. Take a look at Georgia's upcoming travel. Not much of it. Expedia. Seems the dogs may be done with planes for the year next week at Auburn. Two weeks from now, home against Texas A&M. And they'll go all the way to Georgia Tech. And if they make it to the SEC championship game the first weekend of December, travel 72 miles to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. And take it a step further, if Georgia makes the playoff, they could go to the semi, could be at the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl <laughs> in Atlanta, meaning they wouldn't have to get on a plane until the championship game in New Orleans. That's clean living right there. Here's Amir White. The chance of Zeus. They do something neat in the local newspaper here, the Athens Banner Herald. I don't know how often they update it, but fans are always curious. Hey, where could we wind up going? <laughs> how much would the airfare be if it's Phoenix or New Orleans? How much is a Peach Bowl ticket, Fiesta Bowl ticket, national championship ticket? It's, it's expensive if you're a fan of a, a really good team. You know this guy will find the Just money. Just ask Chase Young, right? right? This guy. Yeah. Chase Young story with Ugga looking on. Sounds like a four-game suspension will be handed his way after missing today against Maryland, but they will appeal. I know Herbie reported that it's quite possible that the uh, the ban will be reduced, maybe even cut in half. I don't know what the right number is. On yeah. That. Take sure a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Allstate. Yeah, interesting. Three and four both uh, go down, and I, I think that both Clemson and Georgia will move up into those three and four spots. It'll be interesting to see how far Alabama falls. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if they're uh, ahead of Oregon and Utah. No, don't be shocked if that, that happens because, you know, the Oregon lost to Auburn, Utah lost to SC. I think Alabama's lost to LSU's a lot better than those two losses. How high does, how high does Minnesota go up? Well, certainly into the top 10. They right. were 17th. Got to crack the top 10. Sure. That impressive win at home today against Penn State. Automatically, they're going to go ahead of all the two lost teams. So Florida and Auburn and Wisconsin, who, who's sneaked one out against Iowa today. Um, the question is, you know, will they jump at Oklahoma? Probably not. Give me a number on Alabama. When we wake up Wednesday morning. Where, where is Alabama in the rankings? I think they'll be six or seven. Six or seven. I was going to go five. Yeah. And people are, are trying to figure out to make a case how they can still get into the college football playoff. Again, the, lo the loss to LSU is not going to hurt them as much as they haven't had the greatest schedule. Right. Right. That that in the end. And won't be able to play in the championship game. Is what might keep them out of the playoff. Yep. Right. James Cook. That's Dalvin Cook's kid brother. Dalvin Cook having an impressive mm -hmm. season. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. We thank you for that, all state. Some people have Dalvin Cook in the MVP conversation. The Vikings having a great year. Ahead of Christian McCaffrey? I'm just saying he's in the conversation. There are a lot of, okay. a lot of players in the conversation. <laughs> That's why they call it a conversation. <clears throat> so we hit the final minute. Wrapping up our conversation. Still got three starting offense alignment in on the punt. <laughs> That'll take a Georgia bounce. That's kind of how the night has gone for Mizzou. Ball down at the 22 yard line. Tonight, after Wyoming and Boise State, stay tuned to Sports Center. My close personal friends Kenny Main and Zubin Mahenton. They'll have post game coverage of Alabama LSU and a dive into the James Harden Russell Westbrook partnership at Sports Center after football here on ESPN. I'm glad they opened up the uh, the window there for Aga because it was getting, you know, a little steamy. foggy and steamy in there. 
let the, a, let the, let the I big man breathe. Crawling in. <laughs> he did a windshield wiper. How, how are the temperatures down on the field, Todd? Warm. That wouldn't be the first time Todd was in the no. doghouse. Oh, very good. Ooh. <laughs> Sup, low. What are you referring to? <laughs> 20 seconds left. Good throw and a catch. Barrett Bannister on the receiving end, gain of eight. Final 12 seconds of the game. The nine meetings all time between Georgia and Missouri. This will be the third time the Tigers have been blanked. One last hard hit to send Missouri packing.